Welcome everybody, Just Mike here. Let's work on another cuckoo clock. This is the next clock I'm going to work on. The music people, which is unique about this, is they'll dance one way and then they turn and dance the other way. There's only one of them that does not make a full connection, but I just got the clock. I'm checking it out to see whether there's anything wrong with it. And what I've found so far is obviously it's dirty. And these chains, they feel what I'd say oily. So there's a chance it was close to a kitchen because your kitchen greases will catch on the chain and also go up inside the works because you have the openings in here. And so I know it's really dirty. I also added a I also, on the time side, I added a one size bigger weight because these weights aren't quite enough to get it to run. Now, I wouldn't be adding too much weight on here. I was just trying to find out whether this clock even ran or if it had issues. So far, it sounds pretty good. It had the smaller hooks in here for the original wire type top of the weight this here type is a little bit too big for those but it doesn't matter because I'm changing these ends and I'll probably go ahead and clean these chains because they look like they're in pretty good shape so let me trigger this clock and we'll show you how the dancers work So you can also tell that the timing or the wheel inside for the music has slipped so it needs to be readjusted also. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and clean this clock and show you this uh, contraption that makes these dancers change from one way to another. I think that one part is pretty cool compared to all the dancers are always going around the same way. Also here, some people like to have a measurement. So giving you a rough estimate to the peak of the roof to the bottom here, we're sitting at 12 inches and nine there. But normally you measure the roof. We're at a nine and a half. Now the first thing I normally do is I'll take the ends of the chains off and pull the chains out and then I'll go ahead and take the nut off and pull the hands off and also release the bird from the door. So now I have the ends off so I just pull these through. If they get caught up it's no biggie because I'm going to go inside anyway. There's one chain and these chains I don't know if you can see they look pretty good. They're just, like I say, they kind of have an oil feeling to them. But like I say, I'll take those and clean them. There's a short part of the chain, but it doesn't matter. I'm just winding it. Now these will probably catch. Yep, that one I got to take apart. There, a little quicker on that one. That one's on there good. I might have to soak that a little bit with the oil or a cleaner of some sort. I guy worked with it a little bit and was able to get it loose really on there. There was a, a washer 
so the nut wouldn't crunch into the hand. And there's the piece inside here, the brass piece. It normally stays on here. It has little teeth that when you sh press it on here, it'll hold on to this hand. And that's what keeps, when you turn it by finger, it's supposed to turn the nut looking thing, turn this properly and not be slipping on you. And that's also how you adjust the time. If this thing is five minutes after and the, it cuckoos, as soon as it cuckoos, you pull this off, nut out, and set it back on there and then press this minute hand on in place and that'll get you back to the proper time for this clock to cuckoo and that it doesn't matter where it sits if it's cuckooing 12 then this here needs to be straight up on the 12 and of course this here is just pressed on it's uh this here shaft here is wedge shaped so this just wedges on onto it straighten that out you can see the wire is a bit long which is normally good. Birds inside. And this is protected here. Normally I still lock the door anyway, but the door is not gonna get crunched because this here is setting out. So these that hold the door, sh the back plate on, if they're too loose, you can pop, tap the nail back in a little further, or if that's not working, you take this back off and push them down in so that way they're snug enough that they can hold this. And of course, there's some in instructions on how to operate this clock. I'll go ahead and take a snapshot of it and include this in the end of the video. So here I normally, after I push these up and get them out of the way, stick something in here to pop this out of the way. Of course, there's your gong. Now the next thing I plan on doing is taking the screw out, taking this, this screw out so I can take the bellow out and it also has a staple in the side. Don't worry about the staple, take a screwdriver back here and give it a little bit of a pry to get to take the bellow out. I'm going to take the screw out. And I'm going to put that screw in the bellow to make sure I still make sure that that one goes back to that bellow. Okay, this here, I'm not going to do it on camera, but this here feels like it's been glued into place besides the staple. I don't know why people do that or why the companies do that, but it seems to be kind of a pain. You got to be careful because this is soft wood and you might have to use uh, a putty knife or whatever to press in behind there to try to break it free. It was scary, but I got it popped free. You can tell it was glued on there and as soon as it popped, it just popped off of there. Now you can see the bell is sticking out. That's not really good. It needs to go inside there. So I'll probably uh, put a rubber band or something on here to keep this thing closed to try to keep that bellows going. But it still has, as you heard it, heard it when it was time to cuckoo. But they should be folded in like that. This one wasn't done very well it's, it's kind of old so i'm not going to be messing with trying to reshape all that but that can go in like i got it of course there's the wire that goes over the under the cuckoo bird's tail and makes it so he can cuckoo you can see the red paper they put on top 
inside there is a weight that helps us sing cuckoo or go down to make the the cuckoo sound because this is kind of, I don't know, I'm gonna guess this is balsa wood. It's a very soft wood and doesn't normally have much weight. But when they're older, the paper's already folded in good and everything, and it's pretty easy for them to come down. But there are different size weights depending on what size of a bellows you have. Okay, let me get the screw in the side of this one. Also remember, set the screw in here. When you're putting this back on, if you look real close, there's a hole there and there. That's where the staple went in. You want to line that staple up, push it in the same holes. Don't keep making different holes because this here is meant to make the proper sound. The more holes you end up sticking in here, the less of a cuckoo you're going to get out of that box. Now just saying, I will not glue this back on. If I was afraid this thing's gonna slip, instead of putting the staple so close to the screw, I'd put another finish, small finish nail in down here to keep this thing from rocking. Gonna take these uh, wires off, which just already fell off. They should almost fall off. There they go, they both did. Take a look at them and see. See, they're not quite the same length. So make sure put them with the proper bellows. If you got rubber bands, you can rubber band these to it. So that way it you know for sure that's the one that goes to it. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do on here is I'm going to take that, see about taking that music box off. By the looks of it, I'm going to have to take that nut off too to release this fully. That there is hooked to the works for extra support. And this here feels like it's slipped, so it might have to be tightened again. Yeah, it's loose. And you can see how filthy this thing is, so I have to clean that up too. My next thing is I got four screws to take out to get the works out of there, get the movement out of there. And as I pull it out, this is probably attached, so I have to move it around so the people aren't crashing into the wall back there. They can get through the door. Got them loose. 
I trimmed the people so they can come right through. Now I can finish getting that chain out. You can see how dusty this is, and it's really oily up here. That's why I say more than likely this is around the kitchen, getting the greases from the cooking. If you look inside here, you will see the, I don't know, silicone or what. It's, a, it's clear. It might be plastic. It might be silicone. I don't know. And then, of course, on their, uh, each one here, they either ride on this side or on the inside here. I don't know if you can see it, but they ride on that one. And that depends on which side of the wheel it hits is the way they're going to be swinging around dancing. See how they're hitting there? And then they catch the other side and dance the other way. And not that it matters, as long as this thing ticks properly when it's on the when it's on the wall but you notice this wire that you'd normally bend here in the back that's got a heck of a bend to it that's probably what it took to get this thing to, to tick properly or sound even as it's ticking back and forth this here holds a pendulum this wire doesn't make any difference it's the wire the pendulum wire goes through is what adjusts your uh, whether your clock sits crooked or whether it sits level. And looking here, oops, looking right here, this is the wire the pendulum sits on. This here is spread apart nicely. If it's squished together, your pendulum would have a tendency to rock back and forth as it's ticking. So you want to make sure to get that spread out. That horseshoe looking wire there. And see, we got greasy hair and whatnot on there. So let me take this apart more. Obviously, I don't want to put this into the clock solution because I don't want the paint falling off of them. And I got to be careful on some of this stuff because, such as this here, you have to figure out what it's made out of, whether I want to, how I want to clean it. More hair. Says, that's the thing about a cuckoo clock, is that they, the chain is continuously pulled up to wind it. And then goes back around, unwinding as it's running. And if you got animals, their animal hair gets caught up in there, and that's what helps plug these things up. If you're too close to a kitchen, like I think this was, it gets really greasy, and that's what'll slow down your clock and make you have to clean it more often. Unless you change your ways, <laughs> change your ways in the house or change the location of your cuckoo clock. This here has a plastic, or it could be rubber, I think it's plastic uh, ring, so it goes around smoothly. So you can see how filthy this thing is. And there's the individual rubbers, or it could be metal. Feels like metal that runs on these silicone pieces here. Now, by looking at the two screws here, this here is plastic. 
So it's not silicon, it's just plastic and those wheels right on here to turn the people around. You see, starts here, ends here, starts here, ends here. Same with this side. It starts here, ends here, starts here, ends here. As you can see, this bird is filthy also. I'll try to clean it up the best I can. It's a plastic plate. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get this in the cleaner. Now, in my videos, I have people complain. People that know how to work on these clocks complain that I don't take these things totally apart. And realistically, that's the, probably the best way to, take, to do it is take these things totally apart, unscrew the four screws here that take the plates apart. If you're to do that, you want to make sure to get pictures of everything, every angle, especially if you don't work on these at all or only have one or two. But there's a chance that that might be over most of my people's heads. And so what I try to do is I use a good clock cleaner and if need be, use a toothbrush in there, get it scrubbed down the best you can, everywhere that you can. And obviously you gotta be careful, pay attention to what wires you have. This wire that's hung on here, it pulls it, the counter down. So it's always going down and then we'll lock into place when it's time to stop the cuckooing. Uh, there's other wires, like right on here, for the gong. Uh, just p get pictures of all that. And it doesn't hurt to take pictures now of all this stuff. So if this is up all the way, and if this is out of the way, this would also come out. Now this is a, a little bit simpler that you could do. This here wheel here. Go ahead and take the, now be careful, these things will shoot if you're not careful. And this sits on top of it. And this won't come out either until you take that one off. Lucky so far, huh? So taking that off, don't throw it, don't forget to clean that. Taking this off. This way your shaft can get good and clean. Now this isn't a have to, I'm just saying. It doesn't hurt. Like I say, take pictures because what if you decide to put this over here? Obviously it's not going to connect to nothing. It belongs over here to connect into that gear. But it doesn't hurt to take some of the lightweight outside things out that you might be able to handle. So let's go ahead and get this in the cleaner. Let it soak for a few hours. And then they have a cleaner remover. I don't use that. I use hot water, Dawn dishwashing soap, the, and flush this out the best I can, especially because I'm not taking it apart. And using a toothbrush if need be, even though the cleaner does a pretty good job. And then I flush it with hot water with no soap to get the soapy stuff off. And then I use low heat 
of a hair dryer to get this thing good and dry because there's some places in here that's going to take a while to dry and if you add some heat to it and some wind they're going to dry a lot faster and compared to holding that water in there as you can see this is a plastic plate i thought it's silicone because it's so filthy and i've never had one of this type before opened i went ahead and screwed this plate back on and it's off centered so there's only one way to put it on so you're not hitting the gears and this filthy plate here is clean now to a certain point this is where the people ride on here and it was absolutely filthy and looks so much better now so I'm pretty sure this here was real close if not in the kitchen running so now get this thing back together these are just like pins set them in there they twirl real easily you got the hole in the bottom that you stick it back on you just twist till it goes into place and there we go and these are metal I originally thought that they were a rubber, but they're just a metal that run and catch each side of this in order to turn it. And of course, this goes on next. And from here, we have a lock washer right over here. Okay, I'll take this plate back off and I figured leaving these dry it should be good but for some reason they weren't wanting to slide down like they need to because there's no real pressure and so the dolls or people or what do you want to call them wouldn't dance well now I added a little bit and for the most part they're dancing Now I'd like to get these gears back on. Yeah, it feels much better. So we get the washer on here and here. I think they call it the horseshoe washer. You see how this peg needs to be in here and it grabs the gear and brings it up one as this here catches down one more. That's counting your hours in which this right here, it falls against this plate and this tells the plate what time it is on hour wise. And here it's going to drop down to tell it's done cooking however long it needs to. And now the music's actually supposed to play. If anyone really watches the video, I messed up. 
I put that gear in gear on upside down. Now it's right. It's got the gears there. There now it makes more sense of where it is and as you're putting it on pay attention to where this thing's setting so when it does hit the hour or whatever it needs to it drops down in in place instead of being way off I belong to a clock forum let's just say and they have people asking how they should shine their clocks up. Now, obviously, you're going to want one that's uh, been painted or something with a clear stain, not the clocks that have got the muddy brown look because the muddy brown look is supposed to be there. And also, you start putting this on there, you'll start wiping out that muddy brown look. Anyway, they suggest using this. And let me show you. You can see it's got a little bit of little bit of shine or whatever to it. And I did use a paper towel because I plan on using a brush on it afterwards. But I don't consider this it might be sealed or whatever. But you can see what this roof looks like. Let me pull this up a little higher. There you go. So what I plan on trying on this clock is some of this feed and wax wood polish and conditioner and see how well this works. I'll try it on the roof first and see what happens. This is a B type wax for sure. When it's a uh, colder, it doesn't want to come out as easy. Put a little bit of that on there. Let's see what this thing looks like. Yes, I'm using a paper towel. Yes, it drops off lint. You can use a cloth rag if you don't want that lint. Or you can buff it up with a cloth rag. But for now, that's got a heck of a shine compared to this side that just has the Old English. If you're going to use the Old English, don't spray it on the clock. Spray it on your rag first and then put it on. I let this soak in for a few hours then go ahead and buff it off with the rag. Now that I don't have so much on here, I'm going to go ahead and do this front part too. See how plain that is compared to the shine. And I think that's what a lot of people are trying to do is get a, their clock to look new again to a certain point. So you can see here, this half hasn't been done yet. Look at the shine on this side. And give me just a little more wax and do that.
That looks like it's soaking in pretty nice, even with the finish on there. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and do around here, do these here. I'll get everything. Okay, I got this all waxed up. I don't remember if you saw the bird before I washed it, but it was covered with a greasy oil also from, I'm going to say, the kitchen. Anyway, for right now, I'm going to go ahead and get him on here. And he's not in place. It's just easier to get him on here. And I'm going to go ahead and snug up the screw on the back side here. So that way he's in a ballpark area where he needs to be. So all I have to do is loosen the screw up and move him around where he needs to be. And then eventually he'll be able to cuckoo like he's supposed to. So I discovered turning this, the drum was slipping on the rod. And to tell you the truth, I wouldn't know how to fix that because I don't see any adjustment. I'm sure it's slid on, pressed on, whatever. Don't know. So what I did is I put a drop of super glue on that end and that end because that's all I need to do is keep this barrel stable on here. And I made sure, even though you could adjust here, but I made sure to line up these pegs with the teeth here that make the music. So that way we still keep our tune. So now I can go ahead and install the music box. And this clock, I've already ran it, and the music is stopped. I've brought this up to where there's no music being played. So that should be perfect for getting this installed again. And it should start and stop where it's supposed to be. So let me get this installed. So again, I checked, make sure all my paper was on here. I see I got a little crack right here. So I think I'm gonna do is go ahead and repair that because the rest of the bellows looks pretty good. Just this hinge side's not doing too well. You just put a little bit on here. Get that back side done too. That paper up. Yeah, we can do that. Get that all wet down. Get this thing back on before it dries up on me. Let's press this on here. Without getting stuck to it. No, oh, I forgot to do the upper part of the wood in there. Get that dust too. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and install this into the clock. And I got the hanger that belongs on this side. And remember this here, you just catch it in there and it's on. You don't bend that wire on anything else. If anything it would get bent, it'd be this one just enough to keep it on there if you were having a problem. Okay, I was able to loosen the cuckoo bird after I wired the door. And I have him down now, so when the bellows lifts up, he opens his mouth and tips. So now to get the chain on.
I'm not saying it's the easiest. Because you could have put this on before you put the works in. But I prefer, I will admit, do it this way. That way I'm not dealing with any more than I have to. Put these chains 50-50 so that way they have even weight on each side to hopefully keep, keep it in here. So now I'll go ahead and try to get the chain on the music side. And now I can go ahead and install the hands. The minute hand, I'm not even going to care where it's at. These, like I say, they wedge on here. And so that's what you're going to be doing is pushing it on once you find out what hour it'll cuckoo at. And that's actually the same with this minute hand. I don't know where I'm at on it. Anyway, I can go ahead and install the ends on the chain for the side that pulls down or out or however you want to put it. That's the side you'll put the ring and then obviously the hook on the other end. You check each one of those so you know which ones you're going to put, put them on. Looks like it's working good to me. Now because I didn't take the works apart totally and clean it, they have been oiled, They the works soaked in the bath and scrubbed them up, but because they weren't totally taken apart, it's going to take a little bit longer to get the clock, getting the lube back in and whatnot, and there's a good possibility there's still a little bit of dirt or oils or fuzz balls or whatever that I couldn't see that are inside uh, each one of the places where you oil it. So I think this will start ticking a little bit faster after it gets going. But uh, for right now, I'm happy I got this thing working. I got pretty well clean. I got a nice shine on here from that wax and whatnot. So in a day or two, letting this thing run, which I should probably pick that up to as fast as it'll go. Because all I'm interested in right now is getting the lube mixed up in there and whatnot. So anyway, there you go. So I do hope you enjoyed the video. And like I said before, it's not always the best to go ahead and not tear the clock all the way down, but it is possible. Anyway, if you don't mind, go ahead and subscribe because it's free. And leave me some comments. If you enjoyed the video or worked on another clock, go ahead and let me know because I appreciate it.